Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here. Happy Thanksgiving and welcome to Q&A number 22, AKA number 11 of 12 for this year, 2017. We've done it every month, it's November. One more after this and then we'll see where it goes. So I asked you guys on Twitter, as I usually do, what you wanted to know and side note, if you aren't already following on Twitter, you're definitely gonna wanna do that in the next couple days. I don't wanna say too much, but that's about all I'll give away. I'll link it below. So Andres wants to know, thoughts on net neutrality situation. So honestly, I have a lot of thoughts on this whole net neutrality thing. First of all, okay, if that bothered you even a little bit, then you should brush up on the whole net neutrality vote that's happening yet again. It's almost unbelievable that we continue to have this debate, but at the same time, it is kind of believable. So it's happening again. I'll link below the best guide or information portal that I can find to explain everything. But bottom line, it sucks. Shen asks, what are your top games in the past month that you've played on that badass omen? That's a great question. Uh, I think the most common, like the most amount of play time I've actually put into a game is Actually, probably that VR game, Super Hot. The Omen is set up right now as our HTC Vive setup, and in that little area over there, we've played a game called Super Hot, which is basically a game of like dodging bullets, but time only moves when you move, so you can choose when to dodge things. It's, it's really exciting and fun to play. I've also played a game called Project Cars. Uh, we got a wheel for it, we got a pedal. It's paddle shifting, it's the whole deal, it's pretty fun. But uh, that high refresh rate monitor over there is killing it with the Omen. A lot of fun. Black Friday, question mark, question mark, or Cyber Monday, question mark. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with Cyber Monday on this one. And again, I don't wanna say too much, but you're probably gonna wanna follow on Twitter. Wink, wink. On your Razer video, you had Rocket League wallpaper. Do you enjoy playing the game? What's your rank, if any? I didn't know there was ranks. Or <laughs> was it just a coincidence for the... Yeah, I've played Rocket League a little bit. Now the catch is I actually play it most often on my PS4 Pro on the wallpaper TV, so I play the console version, but that's what I'm familiar with the controls with now. And I think I've gotten pretty good at it. It's mostly my defense that has earned me a rep. I don't score very much. I don't know my rank, but that is a fun game. I'm making it look like I have tons of time for games now. I really still don't. I don't game that much. Like I've played PUBG twice ever. Haven't won yet, I'm just saying. My Instagram feed, three days ago, three days. This guy's made a very good use of the extra characters you get on Twitter now. But I agree with you, dude. I actually hate that Instagram moves things out of chronological order. That's one of the reasons I like Twitter and hate the stock Twitter app is because things get shuffled. I wanna make sure I see everything. And the only way to do that is to go in order from top to bottom or bottom to top. I wish there was an option in Instagram where I could turn that off, but there isn't. I hate it. This guy said, why should I ask a question? To be in the vid, uh. I see, what you, I see what you did there. Despite all the positivity surrounding the Roadster 2, what's one thing you aren't a fan of? That's a good question. There's a lot of hype surrounding that car, of course. Uh, I think the one thing most people will point to is the interior, it's so not like any other supercar. I don't know if you've ever seen the inside of a Lamborghini Aventador or a McLaren or pretty much any high-end supercar like that. Definitely way different. The Tesla has more of a spaceship vibe going with it, but that still doesn't speak to every car person. But my one complaint would actually be, I wish there was a little more, uh, a little more carbon fiber, a little more actual carbon fiber parts, but that's just me. Muhammad says, why don't you shoot an 18 by nine? Dude, I've thought about it a lot. I don't know if you've seen, I'll link John's TLD today. His, his iPhone 10 review was shot in two by one. And he, he doesn't even shoot in two by one that much. But he did, and there were so many shots in it that made me go, now I wanna shoot a two by one, that looks like fun. And the conversation around content is, well, if all of our phones, if all of our screens in our pockets are gonna be two by one now, then we might as well start making these two by one aspect ratio videos, which look really cool, but I still think the majority of people will watch it on computers, will watch it on TVs, and of course phones are very popular, but I don't think there's gonna be any problem with shooting 16 by nine, at least for the time being. Armando says, would you ever go onto the H3 podcast if you were invited? No, I would never go. Of course I would go on the H3 podcast. BAS3M says, how many terabytes did you record slash upload this month? Well, I only upload the final version, which is five, six gigs tops per video, but how many terabytes did I record this month? 
I, I would actually have to go back and check, which I'll do that. But my guess before I go back and check would be, uh, I would, I'm gonna go with about five terabytes. Let's go with five. Can you put us on to some of your favorite ultimate tech gear? Are there any high tech frisbees? You know what? I actually tend to be like the opposite of a tech person when I'm playing ultimate. A lot of people wear like a wearable to keep track of like their heart rate and their steps. I don't like wearing that stuff when I play because it feels like in the way and clunky. So I don't have any wearable tech. I don't really like have my phone on me obviously when I'm playing. Uh, the closest thing I can think of is like the cameras and the footage that people use to record ultimate, which is like the super sweet slow-mo clips. Um, but yeah, there's there's really not that much tech as far as Ultimate goes that I really know of. Hey, but if you wanna watch a bunch of really sweet, super slow motion, Ultimate, basically highlight reels, where it's really good quality Ultimate and really good quality footage, this channel that I'll link below is an amazing combination of that. If you can go check it out, that would be awesome. Prepare to have your mind blown out of your face. Raul says, are you getting the iMac Pro? Yeah, the thing is, like I've thought about this more, uh, they, Apple, when they announced iMac Pro, they said December, I'm pretty sure, for this year. Uh, but then they said the new modular Mac Pro that they're also gonna make was 2018, so next year. And when I saw that, I kind of figured like, oh, well, you know, that's, that's December and then January, we'll get that right afterward. But that's probably not what's gonna happen. 2018 probably means like November, December of next year. So I think iMac Pro will, for me, be the workhorse for that time. And I probably will end up moving to the Mac Pro, but I'm gonna give the iMac Pro a shot. Rumors are already circulating, of course, about the next iPhone and its name. Uh, what do you think Apple will call it and what would you like to see in the next iPhone? Also, how do you think Apple will design it? Uh, I kind of think we'll see like a similar iPhone 10 to this year, but I do wanna see an iPhone 10 Plus but what do they call it? Is it just iPhone 11? There have been rumors that they'll stick with an IPS iPhone and an OLED iPhone, again, side by side. So like iPhone 9 and iPhone 11, but then what happens when the IPS one moves to 10? Do you do, you do that? I really hope they don't release an iPhone 9 and an iPhone 11 at the same time. <laughs> that's a good point. That is a good point. Yeah, that's not the move. Well, we always have these questions with Apple's naming schemes, but they always seem to pull it off. So uh, I guess we'll just wait and see. The Detroit Borg says, every year seems to have a trend and he's right. Uh, 2017 was the year of no bezels. What will define 2018 phones? Uh, and, and I know, look, I can't tell the future, so I'm just really speculating if I guess, but there's something I really liked about this phone, the Razer phone, and that is our 120 hertz displays. I would love for every phone next year to have a 120 hertz OLED, if that's even possible, I'd love it. But what I really honestly think will start to define phones of next year is artificial intelligence adding features via software. There were low-key a lot of things in this past year that became possible because of machine learning and AI that weren't in previous phones. The portrait mode from the front-facing camera, the incredible single-lens rear-facing portrait mode from the Pixel 2, the dot projector from the iPhone 10 and Face ID, all that stuff. Even though an emoji seemed really dumb, again, a lot of this stuff was only possible through machine learning. Saf says, your top five social media platforms in order. I'm assuming you're talking about like my favorites, favorite ones in which case it would be Twitter, I guess would be number one. Instagram, wait, does, is YouTube a social network? Can I, um, I'd probably put, yeah. yeah, YouTube's a social network. So YouTube number one, Twitter number two, Instagram number three, and then I guess I gotta go Facebook number four, Google plus number five. Sorry, Snapchat. <laughs> but either way, that's where I'm gonna end it. Thank you for your questions and thank you for watching this Q&A video. One more for this year. And again, if you're not already following on Twitter, I don't know what you're doing. Open a new tab, hit that. Okay, that's about it. Thanks, talk to you in the next one. Peace.